the softball world has traveled to Colorado this week for the Colorado 4th of July tournament. The rain has moved out. Time for the 18U Power Pool Championship from the Christopher Fields in Westminster, Colorado. It's the Lady Magic against the Lady Dukes. Let's take a look at our brackets to see how we got to this point. A 10 inning game today. Lady Magic a 16-13 win to advance and the Lady Dukes held on for a 5-4 victory over Arizona Storm. And we welcome you up to the broadcast booth. I'm Brett Dolan. This is Kenzie Fowler, former Arizona Wildcat. Great. Delighted to have you with us. We know, Kenzie, there's some outstanding teams and great players, and we're going to see several tonight. But both of these teams had epic semifinal games. A big deal for both of these teams to be in this point because of their games earlier and the matchups that they had. So they're well tested, ready to go all the way down to the end of the wire. And I'm going to say, in my opinion, I think this is the biggest tournament of the season. So you love for these teams that they're playing well at the right time. Certainly the Magic had that 16. 13 game. It was a walk off grand slam to get to that point. Let's take a look at their head coach. It is Ernie Munoz. We'll see the lineup that he's going to run out there today, and it's going to be filled with a lot of Division I commits, and there's some power in this lineup, too. And you look at the top of the lineup Taylor Beal, Arizona commit out of the left handed side. Going to start things off. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And Olivia Duncan is in the circle for the Dukes, and we are underway with strike one. Couple of home runs for Taylor Beal in that 10 inning contest. Some California native wraps one on the ground to short. Feel it by Riho. And the throw across in time for the first down. Let's take a look at the rest of the lineup for this Magic team. Winchill, Kennedy, Bell, Zermeno. Then we've got the Jenkins sisters, twins, Asia and Matei, with Gamsby in the circle. And again, it's Olivia Duncan throwing today for the Dukes. Give us a scouting report on Olivia. Yeah, Duncan, the Clemson commit coming out of the left side. Throwing in the mid to upper 60s, can bring the heat 66, 67 miles an hour. Gonna have that traditional left-handed curve. It's gonna be tough on these three left-handed hitters at the top of the lineup from Beal, Winchell, and Kennedy for Lady Magic. And both of these teams are loaded in arms. So if there's any trouble, just a handful of pitchers we could see to follow. Yeah, we talked to the Lady Dukes, and they have five pitchers on staff, and it sounded like the game plan for Lady Magic was to use multiple arms in this game. Duncan the, should be fresh, though, because her teammate, Keegan Roth, Rothrock, threw earlier against that Arizona Storm team, so going with the fresh option, the lefty. And there's more games to come this week, so it is certainly yes. a balancing act. Winchell out of Livermore, California. All of these players will be off to a college campus in the next month or so. This last go around trying to win a championship. That's strike three. Really nice curve. That's that lefty curve I was just talking about. Winchell, a slapper. You can watch her run through the box, but watch that ball break. Perfectly located, two strikes. A little zip on it, too, at 65 miles an hour. Yes, indeed. Speaking of home runs, Dakota Kennedy steps in. She also had two homers. Just smokes a ball to short. Rio barely could get that glove down. Still made it awfully close at first. But Kennedy able to reach. You talk about exit below. That ball was tattooed. Dakota Kennedy is such a dynamic player. Sitting in the three hole for Lady Magic has the ability to swing away, slap. Of course, go yard. We saw her go yard twice earlier today, but a ton of speed down the line, especially out of a power hitter. That's dynamic. Pretty impressive. Here's the cleanup hitter, Tiana Bell, Antioch, California native. A future Cal Bear, and there's a few Cal Bears and Arizona Wildcats on this team. A lot of Pac-12 commits. That throw might end up in center, and it will. Kennedy gets the base, but Johnson able to back that play up. 
and it downpour. Maybe a couple of hours ago, you see Kennedy wearing some of that dirt <laughs> from Christopher Fields. Look at that spot around second base. <laughs> I mean, hat tip to the grounds crew, though, because this field about an hour ago, I was, I don't know, are we going to get this game in? And right now it looks as good as it can look. Pitch to hit there, but fouled off by Bell. And, of course, there's the big all-star game to follow, so we were just keeping our fingers crossed and hoping that rain was going to move away because this is a fun night for me, Kenzie, when you've got this 18U power pool and then the all-star game to follow. That one is foul. Just about touched by Barbary, a third. Tried to make a diving grab. She's wearing a little bit of that dirt, too. <laughs> Almost had a play on that. She did. She was awfully close. Making a lunging catch. Off the glove of Vega. And Kennedy's going to turn third and score the first run of the game for Lady Magic. So some two out magic indeed for the visitors. Nice piece of hitting there from Bell, but that run to me is all about Dakota Kennedy and her speed. Base, kind of forcing the issue to get on base. Of course, we saw her with the stolen base and then a little bit of a miscue at second base, allowing Kennedy to score all the way from second so easily. Well hit opposite way from Tiana Bell, just doing her job. Another one poked in her right to base hit by Zermanio. Bell will advance to second, played back in by Lassiter. That's three straight hits, all coming with two outs. First base, number 24, Grace Jenkins. Gets us to the Jenkins portion of the lineup. Grace and Hope betting back to back. I'm guessing they've done this a time or two, right? The twin <laughs> sisters? Yeah, it's so interesting. Grace, a lefty, Hope, a righty. Grace will poke one to the right for a base hit. Bell to third. She's going to try to score. Lamar's throws offline, and Grace Jenkins has made it 2 nothing. Lady Magic. That's four straight hits all coming with two outs. And the last two coming off the very first pitch from Olivia Duncan in the circle. So Lady Magic, no secrets, not waiting to see what the scouting report is all about. They're ready to swing. And we talked to Ernie Munoz, the head coach for Lady Magic, before this game, and we asked, what is, what is it about your team that drives it? And it's, he said, it's our offense. And you're seeing it early in this game. That one's handled by Duncan. She'll make the play herself to retire Hope Jenkins. And in the top of the first inning, four hits all coming with two outs. Played it a couple of runs for Lady Magic and the Lady Dukes coming in a bat here in Colorado. I have the same meeting every year with parents and kids, and they always ask the same question, where do I fit? How good am I, coach? What camp should I go to? What coach should I write? Should I call somebody? Am I doing everything I should do? But it all starts with where are they at. Most of them have no idea what their skill package, their total package converts to on a collegiate level. Our Colorado 4th of July is brought to you by Triple Crown Sports and by College Sports Evaluation and Athletes Go Live. Well, the Dukes coach is James Lamar. He's got that towel ready just in case. Take a look at his lineup. They're trailing 2 nothing, getting ready to bat here in the bottom of the first inning. Johnson Vega Lamar, then Estrada Lassiter Miller, Barbary Lamar Rio, and we've seen Duncan already in the circle. And the pitcher is Ramey Gamsby for Lady Magic, finishing off her warm up tosses. 
And Ramey Gamesby, right-handed pitcher. Kind of a spinny pitcher. Throws in the low 60s. Rise ball is her go-to pitch. Very floaty through the zone. Her pitch that she relies on to get those strikeouts. And this is Reagan Johnson stepping in to begin things. She's a Texan. Her cousin is Trey Flowers, NFL player. Shows bunt and takes one for a strike over the inside corner. Oscar Ross Jr. is our plate umpire of our three person crew here in this 18U power play. Keep in mind the Dukes, they had a 5 0 lead, had to hold on for a 5 4 win to advance. That ball hit in the gap to right center field. The ball's carrying well today, and it's going to take a bounce and hop over the fence, and Johnson will have a double to start the bottom of the first. I keep hearing coaches all day saying the ball's carrying. Well, we're in Colorado, but it feels like it's extra juice this afternoon tonight. It's a good place to be a hitter, that's for sure. And I'll tell you what, Lady Magic is very lucky that this was a ground rule double and it hopped over the fence in right center because Reagan Johnson, her speed could have been easily a triple, potentially inside the park home run with a bobble, just the opportunity that her speed gives her. That's a good point. This is Vega, the second baseman. She's going to Duke. No surprise, she'll play for. That ball hit in the air, left center field. That thing is way out. By 40 or 50 feet, Vega has a two-run homer. And Kenzie, just like that, this game is tied. Did that sound good? <laughs> sounded great. <laughs> Very that ball was absolutely crushed. To seize it so deep, pitcher perfect. Watch where this ball lands. Can't even follow it. Yeah, Dakota Kenny just Kennedy in center field giving it the courtesy jog, but clearing the fences. I think that thing disappeared at some point. This is Layla Lamar, coach's daughter. Her mom, Marissa Young, head coach at Duke. But Layla is going to the University of Florida, where she has been committed since the sixth grade. I was one of the last players to get committed in that 2024 class. Of course, I'm all in favor of the recruiting rules changing the last couple of years. And now you have to wait to talk to the coaches and announce your commitment. September 1st of your junior year, which I love, but yeah, she's been committed to Florida for a long time. Right. It's kind of fun dynamic. Playing for her dad, her mom, the college coach at Duke. She's been committed to Florida for a long time. She'll take a strike. So Gansby giving up the double and the two run home. Oh, she got Lamar to chase up around her shoulders. We heard about the rise and the spin from Gamsby, and she was able to get that one above the bat path of Lamar. Yeah, it's her go-to pitch up in the zone. And this is the key for me, is just utilizing that spin that you have and elevating and getting it out of the zone, especially against these hitters for the Lady Dukes who absolutely want to swing it. And you saw the home run from Vega. That ball was just way too over the center cut of the home plate. and. You could just kind of see in this at bat, games be a little bit of sportsmanship, kind of realizing I need to expand the zone very quickly. I think it's a great point, Kenzie. As a pitcher, you're taught you want to throw strikes, you want to work ahead, but some of these hitters, you you know that you have to and not necessarily trick them, but try and work around the parameters of the zone. Sometimes you do have to pitch backwards when you know that hitters are aggressive and they want to swing it. Hit down the line and left, bending foul, and nearly caught by Winchell, who gave that one a tremendous effort, dealing with the warning track at the edge of the fence. Man, a game like this, one time on TV, you know, these hitters want to get their cuts in. <laughs> they don't want to. They don't want to walk here. <laughs> it's going to come right into your kitchen. Oh. Just about got there. Almost had it. She was maybe a couple inches taller. <laughs> 
Lady Magic still looking for the first out this inning. That pitch down and out. You see her working around the zone. Lamar would not chase after offering it that one about neck high earlier in the sequence. And a timeout for a shoe tie for Layla Lamar. I think that's operable, ready to go. Duke's team just stayed in the dugout during this rainstorm earlier today with that wait before this championship matchup. And that ball absolutely ripped in the gap to right center. It's going to go to the fence. Kennedy's going to play it and fire it back in to keep Lamar to a long single. And that one was loud off the bat. What a great at bat there from Layla Lamar. Saw a lot of pitches, saw a couple of well hit foul balls down the left field line opposite way and finally gets a pitch that Gamesby brings her over the heart of the plate and just hits it right where it's pitched. So a double, a homer and a single. Kiki Estrada, the cleanup hitter, steps in. Estrada out of Orange Lutheran High School. That's a good baseball high school in addition to softball. Chino Hills, California native. University of Arkansas commit. Who pig, Kenzie? I've got to get you saying that. Yeah, there's a couple of those <laughs> ready to go here for the Lady Dukes. On my roster, I count four commits for Arkansas. See that spin just working a little bit off the corner from Gamsby and Estrada able to resist it. Can't say I got to believe as a pitcher when you're working a little bit off the corners and you're not getting those chase swings. That's a tough feeling because at some point, you know, you have to come back over that plate. Now you definitely want to have a pitch that you can throw for a strike at any time. And if it is your rise ball, that's all right. You know, using it lower in the zone and then kind of seeing what the hitter's giving you, allowing you to expand when you need to. But that's why the first inning is always so tough as a pitcher. You're trying to figure out the strike zone from the umpire and just see what the, the mantra of the hitters are going to be. Are they aggressive or are they patient? She pulled a string there to Estrada. Yeah, looked like it took a little something off. You see that pig on the side of the helmet for Estrada? Well, she has an upright stance. It's just smokes another one. Some of these swings the Dukes have put forth here in this inning, you almost worry for the infielders. I mean, you better be ready to go. You might get a ball absolutely drilled in your direction. I, I love that Estrada's stance is so calm, and she's just relaxing her legs until the ball is about to come in. Then she gets into her load and kind of falls into her swing. But right now, you just see how relaxed she is. And then she's going to get loaded. A lot of times hitters will get ready a little bit too early and sometimes your muscles start to quiver a little bit and then your legs aren't utilized the way that they should be. And so sometimes if you're relaxed, like Estrada is, it allows your muscles to kind of fire when, when is needed and fire at the right time. Here's a 3-2 and it's on the inside corner for strike three. What a pitch by Gamsby to get that strikeout and the first out. Great location here to win this battle for Ramey Gamesby. This has got to feel good. The number four hitter that's too close with two strikes. Great corner. Painting it perfectly nice and tight. Tremendous spot. Might have been the one pitch that tall lefty did want. Down and in over that inside edge. Here's Jayla Lassiter. That ball smoked right center and deep and gone. The old Miss commit. Jayla Lassiter has the second two-run homer of the inning for the Dukes. Well, we were talking about hitters being aggressive and being ready to swing. Jayla Lassiter, first pitch, sees that her teammates in front of her, I'm sure a little bit of information passed through, so she's ready for this. I don't even think she got all of this, which is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see the excitement. Really nice swing there. Another two run home run for the Lady Dukes. So they've come out with the home run swing for Coach Lamar. This program's been around for five years. Out of Durham, North Carolina. They certainly have some tremendous talent. 
Laura Rothrock, Robert Young, a couple of the assistants, Texas, Tony Vista as well. Next up is Marissa Miller. She's a University of Georgia commit. Now she said last year at Triple Crown Nationals, I know you're seated, Kenzie, or I'd ask you to sit down. <laughs> she hit for the home run cycle last year in five at bats in a game. Oh. We're talking about a solo homer, a two run homer, a three run homer, and of course a grand slam. We call that the Danielle Gibson. We do indeed. <laughs> we call it the Gibby. I don't think there's anything more impressive in sports than that, that stat. Well, no, that's not fair because she'll have a fun fact for the rest of her life. No, I mean, you can't really <laughs> top that one. If you're playing one up uh, your teammate, I don't think anybody can no. defeat that one. No. So just one out, four runs in for the Dukes here in the bottom of the first. Pitched it there, but on the ground to third. Handled by Bell, strong throw. Matthias Miller for out number two. Let's take a look at our magic defense. You see Winchell, Kennedy, and Asia in their outfield. Bell and Beal on the left side of the diamond. Sermeno and Jenkins on the right. Matei catching Gamsby. Nadia Barbary, the third baseman. Next in. Her favorite player, Mia Davidson. That's a pretty good home run hitter to enjoy at a Mississippi State. You can see the Mississippi State there on her oh. helmet. So very fitting. Good choice. She committed <laughs> in the eighth grade to Mississippi State. Douglasville, Georgia native. Pitch above the belt near the letters and missing. That's a good take there from Barbary. If Lady Dukes can lay off of that pitch, it forces Gamsby to bring it down in the zone. And she'll take the walk. So this has started to become a lengthy inning now for Gamsby. The fielder, number 18, Jojo Lamar. Jojo Lamar next in. And her mother as well, the head coach at Duke. Her claim to fame, her proudest softball moment, is earning the number two ranking in the 2025 class. So you're talking about just, just one of the very best, possibly the best. You just think of her age and playing basically up her whole life. And so batting down in the eight hole, but so young, so much softball left in front of her. And I'll tell you what, she's going to be one of the biggest recruits. And I'm sure a lot of coaches already after her, but having to wait a couple of years, wait till she's a junior. You know, I think that's a great point, Kenzie, to repeat. Most of these teammates are headed off to college in a month. She's a 20-25 and smokes one to left. It's going to be up against the fence, handled by Lamar and played back in. And that is a double, and the inning continues. I was reading her bio, and it, she said that she was playing 14U when she was nine years old. So you just put that <laughs> in perspective. She's never really played her age group, has always been sure, playing sure. up. Number four, really nice piece of hitting. This is a good look. Side angle here of her swing. Gets on top and just meets it. And you see the power over left fielder and Winchell and off to the races. Runners at second and third. Again, four runs in for the Dukes here in the bottom of the first. Natalia <laughs> Rijo. Her father, Fernando, played professional baseball for 15 years. You have to remember her uncle, Jose Rio, the pitcher for the Cincinnati Reds. Now the University of Arkansas commit. And that one's fouled away. It's 
some good DNA. Don't lose that. I mean, yeah. some from the other no, side. That, that's fine. Magic would really love to get that final out. You always feel like with teams this powerful, just the longer it takes to get those three outs, the more potential there is for another big swing or some damage. Right back to the circle. Knocked down by Gamsby, calmly able to pick it up and throw the first for the out on Rio. So she smoked a ball, but she is out to end the inning. And she lived to tell about it. But a couple of home runs for the Dukes. They came out swinging here in the bottom of the first. It was Vega going with the long ball. And then followed by Lassiter with another two-run shot. And it's a 4-2 game. It's a 4-2 Dukes lead as we go to the second inning. Beautiful Colorado. And the Colorado 4th of July is brought to you by Triple Crown Sports, celebrating its 40th year as a creator of memory pack tournaments in multiple sports from the youth ranks through college. See what's going on and what's next at TripleCrownSports.com. So glad the weather cooperated for this big night. We head to the second inning of this 18U Power Pool Championship. Hard to believe we've only played one inning. We've seen a lot of softball. <laughs> seen enough offense to cover a whole game already. Let's look at the fields. Christopher Fields here in Westminster, Colorado, the longtime home of this event. Big all-star game to follow. There's a college all-star game on one of the adjoining fields here at this complex. Water ball softball this week. Lauren Asia is going to lead things off against Olivia Duncan. Asia's father, Larry, one of the assistant coaches. She's a Stockton, California native, University of San Diego commit. On her bio, favorite player, Shay Knighton, one of the assistant coaches, of course. <laughs> for University of San Diego. It does help, a little symmetry there. Old school, no batting gloves for Lauren Asian. Always looks cool. I, can never, I could never have done that. I always had to wear <laughs> batting gloves, but I always envied 
the hitters that could just go no batting gloves. It just looks cool. And Asia goes down on strikes. That's a good start for Duncan in the circle, able to spin that ball out of the zone, get the wave of the miss and the K. Especially after your team puts a four sp spot up on the board for you, you want to go out and attack the first hitter. That's a perfect pitcher's pitch. Two strikes, expanding the zone, lowering the zone with some down movement. Right back to the circle, handled off the bat of Matei by Duncan. And that's two quick outs. We've seen a handful of balls right back to the circle already. And just early in this game for both teams, I've noticed the hitters very aggressive early in the count, not wanting to go deep in two strikes. So many first pitch swingings and a lot of first pitch singles. You said it earlier, this game is on TV. Why not, <laughs> why not go up there and hack? Going to go back to the top of the lineup with Reagan Johnson. I beg your pardon. This is Taylor Beal who bounced to short. Her only time in. But already a couple of home runs in that game that, as we mentioned before, went 10 innings. So it took a while to find a winner to get to this championship game. And nothing like a walk-off grand slam from Hope Jenkins to win it. And the fun part, though, and that is strike three, and that will end the inning. How about the frame by Olivia Duncan? We'll step aside. He played an inning and a half. Good pitching frame from Duncan. It's a 4-2 game. Duke's in front. You don't belong because of what you look like or where you come from. But don't wait to see someone else do it first. Want doesn't look like anything. And it can't come from anywhere but within. Here we go to the bottom of the second. Fans settling in for what could be a fun night. Already been a busy day for these teams, and the Dukes scored four runs in the bottom of the first. They're going to see a different pitcher, though, in the circle now for the Magic. We talked to the Lady Magic coaches, Ernie Munoz, before the game, and he said that they were going to use multiple arms in this championship game, and Gamesby got the start, got roughed up a little bit with four runs across, two home runs, and so very quickly making a change and going to Malia Johnson. Johnson ready to go. Young lady that's a UCSB commit. There's Coach Ernie Munoz looking on. His wife involved in these teams that they coach as well for the Lady Magic. Yeah, both of these coaching staffs very family oriented in terms of traveling as a as a unit and youngsters being around these young women playing club softball. Reagan Johnson doubled to begin the bottom of the first inning and she bats again. Her favorite player, Natasha Watley. Hooks one on the ground to second. Sir Manio quickly has to get rid of that softball and retires Johnson for the first out. So we're starting to settle in just a bit. Second base, number 17, Amina Vega. Well, all Amina Vega did, Kenzie was hit a home run, and we lost track of it. It went so far beyond the fence. <laughs> yeah, by far the biggest hit so far in this game. Yeah, 
She played for the Puerto Rican national team. Duke University commit. Waited on an off speed pitch, able to serve it foul. Magic got two runs in there first. The Dukes got four in the bottom of the inning. They love to tack on with a few more. That one is lifted down the line, bending out of play, just out of the reach. Our cameraman and there's a little bit of foul territory to work with here at the Christopher Fields. I love that high angle we're seeing today. Really beautiful ballpark here, and you can kind of see all the action. It's very unique. I like it. Kind of a lot going on. This is a bit of a festival for softball, not just for the teams that are competing, but others that want to come out and watch what's going on. A lot of a apparel as well available, merchandise. You can't go anywhere in the state of Colorado in, during this week and not run into someone in a uniform or a, a coach. It's <laughs> Rent a car, oh, for it's example. An, it's amazing whether you're going out to eat or going to your hotel. There's just always softball players throughout this entire state. Beal handles that smash off the bat of Vega and retires her for the second out. Looks like Johnson's been able to change speeds a bit, and Vega was able to wait for it enough that she didn't completely barrel it up, but still hit it sharply to short for another ground out. Yeah, Malaya Johnson kind of has a unique windup, so definitely as a hitter, I'm watching that windup and trying to track the timing down because it's just a little bit unique when you watch it. A lot of motion and movement to it. And the ball's kind of going all around. And as a hitter, you're trying to stay locked in on a pitcher's hip. And sometimes when there's a lot of movement, it plays tricks on your eyes just a little bit. Let's watch this windup. And again, I mean, there's a lot going on. You're watching the arms, you're watching the legs. And as a hitter, you need to pick up the release point. Right. And you're, that ball's switching from the right hip to the left hip and then going back to the right hip. Well, she's going to get three ground balls for three outs and a perfect inning. So Johnson able to calm things down. We played two innings in this 18U Power Pool Championship, off and rolling in a 4-2 game. It's a 4-2 game as we to the third inning. Dukes lead the Magic. Hey, when we all play, we all win. Gatorade is committed to giving millions their chance to get in the game. Together, we can fuel tomorrow. There's a guy giving out Gatorade samples just down the walkway, and I was tempted to grab about 16 for us up here in the booth. 
Colorado, it could be toasty, it can rain, it could be cool, it can warm up again, there could be some lightning. You get a mixture of everything. It's like you get four seasons in the summer. In one day. In one day, yep. This is Mickey Winchell. She struck out back in the first. Olivia Duncan back out there working with a 4-2 lead. And the first one misses high for a ball. Livermore, California native, had a grandfather that played in the NFL, and she's going to Notre Dame. And time is called. Winchell just holding that bat up there, and Duncan was making her wait, so she requested time. There's our over-the-top camera. Is that from the blimp? Seriously. It's like drone status. <laughs> I think I could get used to that. Yeah, I love it. You can always see the, the shifts of the players and just the gaps in the on the field. Really cool angle. Poke foul outside of third base. Duncan gave up four straight hits with two outs in the first. A couple of balls were hit at infielders, but off the glove or hard hit. And then she bounced back, Kenzie, with a perfect second, including a couple of strikeouts. See if Lamar can get there. Tracking fast, but unable to make the play. And a game like this, the goal of, as a pitcher is you just want to limit the long ball. It sounds crazy, <laughs> but when you're pitching in Colorado, the ball just absolutely flies, and so it's always advantage hitter. And it's just you want to limit the long ball. And to me, it's limiting the big inning and limiting people on base. Because if the home runs are going to happen, which, quite frankly, if you watch any game here in Colorado, you're going to see a long ball here or there. You just want to make sure those home runs are solo home runs and not three-run home runs, grand slams, or even a two-run home run. I think it's an important point. Limiting base runners, just keeping the traffic, if, if all possible, to a minimum. Rio's going to charge quickly, able to get rid of that ball and a throw to first to retire Winchell. I mean, that was a fluid shortstop play in order to retire the speedy runner. Little slap work from Winchell, trying to put the pressure on the defense. Credit Rio, really nice play, getting it off in time. Yeah, I like that a lot. So all of a sudden, that is now six straight set down by Duncan. And a good test here with Dakota Kennedy. And again, all she did was hit two home runs. Was she the individual that was robbed of a third? That one is in the air to center field. Well, there's her third in the last two games. <laughs> I think you teed that up pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> Duncan had started to cruise, but she got to the meat of the lineup for Lady Magic. And don't look now, we've got ourselves a one-run game on the home run from Dakota Kennedy. But, Brett, the key is a sol it's a solo home run. You take care of Winchell, the slapper, speed off the bases. And Dakota Kennedy, she's such a dynamic player. She's going to get hers. But I'm telling you, when this ball game shakes out, this run one-run home run may not be the difference maker because each team can swing it like that. I think she's going to enjoy swinging in Tucson. Oh, uh, the ball flies in Colorado. The ball also flies in Tucson. <laughs> so she will like her time there down at Hill and Brand for sure. Off the bat of Bell, and it'll be tracked down by Vega to make the catch for the second out. I would say as well, Kenzie, when a ball goes up and you have a chance to make a play as a pitcher, you're hoping that ball is caught. That yes. out is recorded. <laughs> And maybe a little bit of fool's gold here in Colorado for these pitchers where they feel like they, like for right there, Dakota Kenny, she didn't even get all of that, which is crazy. That's just the power that she has. But also you have the high altitude here in Colorado. So a pitcher, you're thinking, oh, yeah, okay, jammed her up a little bit. And then you're watching the ball going, going, going. And you're like, when is it stopping? I was tempted not to watch. Is exactly. So Mino will get her second hit. So she's a couple of singles in as many at-bats. And I think both times they were on the first pitch. You're correct. She's not giving us a chance to no. give her introduction. <laughs> we want to talk about you, Reyna. First base, 
First pitch. Hey, if you like it, go get it. Sometimes the first pitch is the best one that you're going to get. So might as well be on time, be ready, and swing hard. She's a Sacramento native, committed to San Jose State. We'll get in her notes, even when she's quick. And this is Grace Jenkins. And she's going to first pitch swing. Who wants it? Barbary there to end the inning. A little bit of traffic for Lady Magic. They got the home run from Dakota Kennedy. A long solo shot that makes it a 4-3 game. I have the same meeting every year with parents and kids, and they always ask the same question, where do I fit? How good am I, coach? What camp should I go to? What coach should I write? Should I call somebody? Am I doing everything I should do? But it all starts with where are they at. Most of them have no idea what their skill package, their total package converts to on a collegiate level. Hey, coming up after this one, right here on the ESPN platforms, it's the 18U Future Star game. And I'm trying to do my lineups during the course of this one. I mean, you're talking about 30 players or so batting for each team. So we're, we know we're going to see a who's who of future college stars. Kenzie, you were talking about what this tournament looks like. How about 1,100 plus teams? That's the most teams they've ever had in this event. And you look at... 47 different states, even Canada showing out, 40 different complexes. It's just the state of Colorado for this week and the sport of softball. I said this in the open, but this is, in my opinion, I'll just say it, it's the biggest tournament of the season. It's just the most exciting with the convergence of the softball world and the community all in the same state. It's just, you never get that the rest of the year. I would like to say just about every single school at every level is here in yes. some capacity or another recruiting trying to see as many players as they possibly can. Here is Estrada. There's other coaches that are here just to see their future players in games like this. I mean they've been long since committed but a chance to see them in this format. Estrada went down looking after hitting a couple of loud fall, foul balls in the first. Yeah, honestly, I feel for the coaches in this tournament. I feel like there wouldn't be enough games that they can get to. You almost want to clone yourself and try and cover every single different ballpark and team level, you name it. It's tough, right? I mean, you really have to come as a staff for some of the larger yes. schools in order to distribute yep. your coaches three or four around the Denver area with all those fields in use. For me, these last couple of years, I think this is maybe the sixth or seventh year I've, I've come to this event. But the last two have been as a parent as well, so I've got, there you <laughs> I've go. got the games you in the bet. morning and these games in the afternoon and evening, and it is a lot of fun. We're just experiencing it through different eyes now. Drilled in the air to center. Does this ball have enough? Yes, it does. A leap by Kennedy, but Estrada's got the home run. We saw some bat speed even on a foul ball during a strikeout in the first. I don't think she got all of that one either, Kenzie, but she still got enough to homer. These ladies can hack on both sides. I'm so impressed with the swings that I'm seeing all throughout this game. A little bit of an off-speed pitch here. You can see Estrada, her legs kind of leak a little bit, but stays back just enough. And of course, her hands and the power and the bat speed that you're talking about. It's got to feel good. Hits that ball dead center. Nice little trot around the bases. Indeed. So the Magic had cut it to a one-run game on the Kennedy home run. Estrada makes it a two-run contest again. And here's Lassiter. And she hit a home run as well, a two-run shot back in the first for the Old Miss commit.
Alabama native. Just rip but foul. You get an idea sometimes during at bats on swings like that just the bat speed you're dealing. And as a pitcher you're always aware. <laughs> you, you feel the foul ball and yes it's a long strike but OK she was on it seeing it well. Times up just a little bit ahead and so you want to either attack inside again get another free strike. But you just kind of feel that that foul ball. That's what I was going to ask you next how that affects your next couple of pitches that are being. There's a lot to think reaped, about there. Yeah. There? I mean always. Yeah. You're worried about putting a ball in the same spot. And at the same point. You realize that when these teams and these hitters get to this game there's not a lot of weak spots there's not a lot of cold zones in the scouting reports for any of these individuals. So Lassiter has a chance though for a two homer game dealing with that wind up of Johnson and that's just perfectly placed at the knees maybe just on or off that outside corner. Yeah a little pitch to pitch there she throws the inside pitch pitch prior and of course Lassiter of course drills it down the line and so next pitch paints that outside corner. There might be some coaches that would say hey pitch to your strengths do what you do well going up against these hitters. I think that might be easier said than done at times when you get this deep into this power pool and that one's wrapped on the ground into left for a base hit just because you know the one part can see you may be facing certain teams there might be some weaker bats six seven eight nine but I think both of these teams pride themselves on depth one through nine in their lineups. Yeah, you look at what especially for Lady Magic and then of course the Lady Dukes and their games prior they saw home runs from the bottom half of the lineup. That's the reason that they're at this point in the tournament. This is Marissa Miller. She grounded out to third her only time in. She's a University of Georgia commit. Swanee Georgia native. She's a big Jocelyn Allo fan who could not be right that one on a bounce came up and hit Lassiter. She'll get the uh, stolen base maybe a bit of a bruise as well but she's in scoring position. Second stolen base of the game. First one was for Lady Magic with Dakota Kennedy. This one Jayla Lassiter showing off the speed. I'd say though if you're a power hitter you would be real hard not to be a fan of Jocelyn Allo with what she did in her career the consistency how hard it is to Homer and how many she did. And then getting that celebration home run there's a play at third and it's going to be in time Lasseter tried to advance. But she was erased. Miss Mate signifying the first out of the inning. It's got to feel good. Yeah. yeah for Mate you get that rebound giving up the stolen base pitch prior and then you get another opportunity for redemption really good textbook block right there. You see her eyes locking in on Lassiter the whole way. Really nice rebound perfect throw good tag. I think what we saw in that replay from Mate was just that ability to come up with the ball to secure it against her body when it was rolling away had it just dropped were not been secured and held on to that would have been an extra base for Lassiter. And I like the aggression. Lassiter has a ton of speed. You see the ball in the dirt. You're going to give yourself a chance. You have to have a perfect block, a perfect throw, perfect tag and Lady Magic executes all three. But I do like the aggressive base running even though she was out. Two and the count. Tim Miller and she's going to call time. I was getting ready to say though to see Asolo hit uh, Alo hit that home run back home in Hawaii. I mean what a, what a tremendous moment that was for her and really all of softball. I don't know who the script writers are for that type of thing. That's so, so true. They were earning their money. Yeah really a bold pick for 
some of these young ladies to put Jocelyn Allo as their favorite player. It's like, yeah, she was that girl <laughs> for college softball. But I love it. Fortunately for us fans, finally graduating and right. moving on. I'm sure there's some pitchers in the Big 12 saying the same oh, thing. Oh, you bet. I think the entire country, every pitcher kind of took a sigh of breath when the season was over. I was like, all right, we don't have to pitch to her anymore. On the ground to short. Beal was able to take a step to her left to secure it and then throw out Miller knowing the catcher was running. And that's the second out. Nice play there from Beal, the shortstop. Third base, number 21. Covering Alaria some ground. Barbary. Instead of cutting that ball off immediately, she angled backwards just to make sure she got a true hop. Yeah, that's the key is just opening it up and allowing yourself to create some space. Kind of turning into an outfielder with a little bit of a drop step. Here's Barbary, another Georgia native. Another individual that, as we mentioned before, was one of those that committed early in the eighth grade to Mississippi State. Wanted to swing, but able to resist and keep those hands back and take it for a ball. I could have saved him the time. She didn't swing. <laughs> she wanted to. I mean, to be a big power hitter, you've got to have that yes, yes, no mentality. Oh, my goodness. Where will this one land? A no doubt home run from Barbary. Just smoked one for the second homer of the inning after Estrada had one earlier. These hitters have not been cheated some of their home run swings. We've seen it. Let's hear this one. Listen to the swing, the contact. If you're at home and you're watching this game, this is that's what a 2-0 swing looks like. Sitting on something that you can drive, but taking a, a big hack, a bigger hack than normal. You just get that hitter's count, kind of opens things up a little bit, get on time, and Do absolutely damage. crushed it. <laughs> this is Lamar. She doubled in her only at bat, JoJo. And again, keep in mind, she is a 2025 player, so she's going to be in this event or in these Futures games for years and years to come. I would think at some point, Kenzie, when you played up your entire career, you get to this point now where so many of your teammates will go on to college. It's like you look around and where is everyone? Right. <laughs> you almost feel like, well, I'm ready for the next level, too, right. but there's a few more years left. Absolutely ripped again. Blistered in the left field for a base hit, so she's had a double and now a single. It's a really nice piece of hitting. Goes down to get it, drives it to left field. Drove her double in her last at bat to left field as well. So strong to that side. I'd be leery of playing in as a third baseman. Very true. You better have your dental plan up to date <laughs> and you better be ready. Rijo lifting one to right center and that ball's going to go. A two run home run from Rio. That is the third homer of this inning for the Dukes. Second time through the lineup. Bottom of the order showing its depth and doing some more damage. We're only in the third inning, and that's five home runs for the Lady Dukes. My scoreboard, or my scorebook, rather, is getting a workout. <laughs> Say it is. You need a backup pen just in case you run out of ink. That one was a bit elevated. And she was able to elevate and celebrate. And these pitches from Lady Magic pitchers are just a little bit too sweet, and credit the Lady Dukes, they're all over it. It's one thing to get a good pitch, it's another thing to execute and hit it where it's pitched, be on time, have your mindset be in the right spot, to be aggressive, and I'd say her mindset is in the right spot. Kenzie, you see that dugout, and I think we're going to have a pitching change. 
You get an idea, though, this talent level. There's no wild celebrations. This has happened several times before. That old act like you've been there before. Well, they have been there before. It's just, well, it's another game. It's another swing. They're used to having this type of success. I feel like there may be a little bit of dugout competition going on about who's left to hit a home run. Because <laughs> right now, five different players have left the, left the yard. Let's get a feeling there's some high-level hitting discussion going on right now with this Duke's team. Just talking ball, talking pitching. And Gamsby is going to re-enter. We saw her throw in the first, gave up a couple of homers and four runs. Then Johnson came on, had a perfect second before getting touched up for the three homers here in the third. So Randy Gamsby at a Napa, California, a Rutgers come in. Come back in. You got to throw a no hitter against her high school rival to secure the uh, championship. Vintage high school. Coach Lamar has seen a few of these home runs as well. I don't think this is anything new to what his team has done. The tough part, though, for Gamsby is now she's going to circle back to the top of the line. And it's just hard sometimes as a pitcher when you start the game and then you come out and then you have to re-enter, re-warm up, and also get your mindset right. Because sometimes you, it's really easy as a pitcher to check out of the game once you've been taken out. And so she's got to recheck in, go back to work, and especially the top of the lineup. Know that these Duke hitters are going to come after them. And Johnson already batting for the third time. She's doubled, she scored, she's bounced out. Pitch is just off the corner. That's a pitch I'm sure Gamsby is saying, I need to get that one. A little further off the corner. She didn't get the previous pitch, and that one was one that Reagan Johnson was able to calmly take. That's a good bunt. Handled by Bell. Quick throw. There was some traffic in the area. Both Sermenio and Jenkins. And Reagan Johnson's going to beat it out. There was a little bobble at first from Zermanio trying to catch this ball, but I, I think she might beat this out no matter if that ball's caught cleanly. Really good soft bunt with Bell having to run all the way in. A little bit of miscommunication there. I'm going to give her a base hit. I think I will too. And there's Vega who homered back in the first. She's had one of those five home runs for the Dukes. Florida native at a university high. And the Duke commit. Keep in mind, we're only in the bottom of the third inning. Dribbler to first. Jenkins is going to have to race for the bag, and she is just going to win it to end the inning. Coach Lamar not so sure. This was the third homer of the inning. Riho with a no doubter, and the Dukes swinging their bats here today in Colorado.
three innings complete today. The Dukes have an 8-3 lead over the Lady Magic. Athletes Go Live is transforming amateur athletics with a multifunctional mobile and desktop application. It combines live sports streaming, scoring, and athlete profiles into one platform, providing a seamless presentation and an incredible ability to interact with college coaches. Visit athletesgolive.com or download the app today. And I believe there's a monthly charge in my checking account for Athletes Go Live. I'm just the check writer. <laughs> I just throw them up into the air and we just keep on rolling. Now the Colorado 4th of July. Brett Dolda and Kenzie Fowler. Kenzie, it feels like this is an important stretch right now for the Lady Magic, trailing by five. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. You look at how this game has progressed, and every time Lady Magic has scored, the Lady Dukes have come back and answered and answered with more runs. And so if the trend continues here, it's just kind of anything you can do, we can do. And it's back and forth thus far. But I'll tell you what, after watching Lady Magic earlier today against Firecrackers Brashear and that extra inning 16 to 13 game where they walked it off with a grand slam. They were down in that game at 1.7 to 1. True. So if anyone can come back and kind of feeling what they did earlier today, it's definitely the Lady Magic. And as Hope Jenkins steps in, we ask these young ladies what their claim to fame is or proudest softball moment. And we haven't fill out these questionnaires after the semifinal game. She put walk off grand slam after 11 innings to put us into this game. So hers <laughs> is recent. I love it. It's fresh. University of Connecticut commit. Pokes one to Estrada at first, able to catch that soft line drive for the first out. In fact, we understand that the Jenkins father does his own radio broadcast for the family members that are here and puts it up on Facebook so he was able to call the walk off grand slam of his daughter. It's pretty that's pretty cool. <laughs> Doesn't happen every day. It's one that you save and post to all your social media platforms and pin it at the top. Yep. Leave it there. Yeah. Looks like Shane McDowell is going to pinch it for Asia. So a chance to see Shay, Roseville, California native. She also committed in the eighth grade to Oregon State, so uh, another uh, Pac 12er. This Lady Magic team played earlier. They the and she's going to take strike one. Yeah, you can kind of see the West Coast, East Coast influence on both of these rosters, just in terms of where they've been committed and where they've chosen to spend the next four years. And I think it does make this type of an event even that much more enjoyable. It does give you that West Coast, East Coast flavor, even though the Dukes really have some players committed all over the country, in the SEC and ACC. McDowell chased that high one. Yeah, and you get matchups that you may typically not get very often, getting to play some a West Coast getting to play an East Coast team. Meet here in the middle. That's a liner to center. Run down by Johnson to retire the pinch hitter McDowell with a second out. Good break on that ball by Johnson. Number eight, Grace Hudson. If this young lady is going to play in center field next year in Arkansas, she'll replace the SEC Player of the Year in KB Sides with patrolled center. McDowell hits this ball square on the nose. Really nice piece of hitting, but like you're talking about, Johnson running it down in center field. This is the catcher, Grace Matei. She's a Utah State commit. There's Johnson out there in center. Capital Christian High School in California for Mate. Hit a comebacker to the circle and it was hit better than that, but uh, she was retired 1 3 and her only at bat, which came in the second. I'm so impressed with the job that Olivia Duncan has done. Of course, giving up the one solo home run to Dakota Kennedy and the two runs in the first off 
RBI single of Tiana Bell, but other than that, she's really settled in nice. Mate serves one to right. How about that leaping grab by Lassiter? I thought that first step might have burned her. She slammed on the brakes, reached up, and made a fine play. Why not? Really nice piece. Good catch out in right field. Saw her teammate Johnson have a good catch. She said, I'm going to one-up you. Go run it down. I thought that ball gets past her. You're looking at extra bases. In a game like this, you got to secure it, and she does. You might think you don't belong because of what you look like or where you come from. But don't wait to see someone else do it first. Want doesn't look like anything. And it can't come from anywhere. But within. Well, the fans still gathering in for this 18U championship game here in the power pool. The Dukes ready to bat in the bottom of the fourth, leading the Lady Magic 8-3. to three. And in those eight runs have been five homers. Layla Lamar is going to lead things off. She's single, scored a run, also bounced out to first. Gamsby right back to the circle might get it out on one pitch a roller to Beal close at first but Lamar retired and that's a strong start to this inning for Gamsby and the Lady Magic. First base number 89 Kiki Estrada. Now the chance to take a look at Kiki Estrada who homered back in the third inning but that was one of three homers later on Barbary had another solo shot. Rio had a two run homer. Estrada's was to dead center. And you can see Gamsby really trying to keep that pitch down and off the corner if at all possible. Yeah, you look at the home run from Estrada and then Barbary, like you were talking about, both solo home runs. If you have a couple of teammates aboard this score could be pretty much out of reach but only five run difference I think a team like Lady Magic if they can execute this inning and get themselves another chance to swing the bats could get right back into things hard hit basic poke between Bell and Beal and Estrada has her second in and three at bats and a base runner aboard with one out She's almost disappointed in that swing, right? She'll take the hit, but she's like, darn it. <laughs> Square it up. The Lady Dukes have other plans. They're just going to keep on hitting. So impressive. She sees that pitch so deep. Drives it to left field. She's feeling good. She's on base. She'll take it. Also brings up Lassiter. Now, she had the two-run homer in the first and also singled in the third inning. Trying to play a little small ball. I was just thinking, you know, this is a, obviously a good time to bunt. No outs runner at first, but the way that this lineup swings, I was thinking, no way. <laughs> <laughs> it does catch you by surprise, right? Right on, yeah. It's the element of surprise, maybe, that works in Lassiter's favor. I mean, you hit the ball so hard. I mentioned it earlier. As an infielder, you have to make that business decision. Are you going to play in? Or are you going to creep back a right. step, giving you an extra split second? And all of a sudden, you creep back a little bit. That's when they, they drop down a punt. Well, and sometimes even just as a power hitter, just showing a bunt and 
showing the corners that it may be something that you do, bringing them in an extra step or two, opening them some things up for you, and then you can swing away. And Agreed. Just a little bit of strategy. You see the corners playing around the base. From that overhead camera, if I was an infielder on the left side of the diamond, I'd be playing at the cut of the grass rather than in on the dirt. Yeah, if Lasseter does want to bunt, it's there for her down the third baseline because of where Bell's playing. She's playing way back at the bag, just respecting the power. I might need a relay from third to first as deep as I might play <laughs> against uh, some of these hitters. Hamsby going away, away the last couple of pitches. Really nice location there. Is it just me or is she drifting to that first base side as she releases? Yeah, her, her stride line is definitely way to her left. Is that unique? A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. When you think about, and this is probably a baseball term, that direct path from the mound of the plate. But again, she's almost jumping towards what would be the on deck circle area or that left handed batter's box. You'll see it here from this angle. Yeah, it's kind of interesting because she is stepping left and she's throwing outside. So away from Lasseter, typically as a pitcher, right handed pitcher, if you step to your left, that's usually to create some space for a screwball, which would be inside to Lasseter. So just very unique in what you're pointing to. And it's just the way that she rolls and every pitcher is a little bit different. So it makes us unique. And that one is up the middle for a base hit. And Estrada goes to second. I was wondering as Lasseter gets her third base hit if it's just a real intent to keep pitches away from some of these powerful hitters. Lasseter cannot be stopped though. She has two singles and a home run already. Just a pure hitter. Contact hitter. And she had a home run that went opposite field and then she had that single down the line and now she goes up the middle so just showcasing her spray chart. Got to take two coaches to point out a pinch hitter. <laughs> Kyrie Rodriguez. I had an uncle. Mickey Brantley former major league player. She is a Duke commit as well. Palm Beach Gardens High School in West Palm Beach Florida. It's tough though as a coach you've got hitters on your bench that would probably be tearing it up for other teams that you have to find a way to get into these games and into the lineup at times. That is really nice here you get one game on TV of course these lineups and these rosters are are utilized one through nine one through 18 whatever it is but just give them a little at bat little courtesy pinch run on the game that's on TV and why not. Spot no. So Nigel is going to run at second base for Estrada. And as we mentioned, a pinch hitter as well for Marissa Miller. And Kyrie Rodriguez. Dukes had four runs in the first. They scored four runs in the third. In the air to left field, starting to carry Winchell back with room. She had enough to put it away. You didn't get the feeling Rodriguez got all of that from the sound, but it still just about got to the fence. Just a little bit out in front. Really good swing. Just the timing was a little bit off. Nice play here from. Winchell going to find the fence. That fence is flexible. And as an outfielder, <laughs> there will be a few that go for a ride. And you get back there and hope that you're going to be able to stay on your feet. Yeah, it is tricky for outfielders because it's hard to go find it and feel it because it's a little right. bit lower and flexible versus something that's a little higher and more firm. But I will tell you, I've talked to outfielders about these type of breakaway fences, and they love the fact that they can run through them if they get the opportunity. Kind of freeze your mind to just go after it. You don't pull a bump Bailey and just run into that fence and <laughs> then put the chalk outline. 
Go right through else, it yeah. if you need yeah, to. Yeah, just keep on rolling. Yeah. Get all tangled up. This might be trouble, though. This ball will fall off the bat of Barbary, and it's going to produce a run. Second RBI for Barbary, and it's a 9-3 game for the Dukes. Almost felt like that one was in no man's land. So Mino, McDowell, the new right fielder, were out there trying to track that one down. And this is Jojo Lamar, who was already doubled and singled. So we're in the fourth inning. Estrada's got a couple of hits. Lasseter with three hits. Barbary with two. Lamar trying to get her third. I'm telling you, there's some in-team competition here. I think you're right. <laughs> See if you can equal my performance or better it. Good luck. That's right. It's a low hand position for Jojo Lamar. Right around the belt, brings it up a bit as she takes a big swing. Fouls one back out of the concourse. Christopher Fields. It's part of the uniqueness, I think, of our game. You see so many different stances. Yeah. You know, Strata had the high hands and very upright. This is a crouched low hand position. And just what I love about it is when you get to the meat of the swing, the point of contact, when you're swinging your best, almost everyone looks the same. It's just how you start. There's so many different variations to getting you to feeling good. And however you want to do it, as long as you're getting, getting it done, there's so many different ways. It's true. If you can get to that point that all hitters love, it doesn't matter how you start. It's, it's what you do when yep. you get to that finish point, that contact point. Yep. It's kind of the same thing with pitchers. You see so many different windups, but you go to the K in that freeze frame K position. Majority of us are going to look the same. That ball smoked off the bat of Lamar. That is her third hit. It's going to go all the way to the fence. It's going to score a run and maybe two. Barbary's not going to stop. The throw is cut off. And two score on a double from Lamar. Her third hit. And the Magic had a chance maybe to get that third out of the inning. But this Lady Dukes team, they just keep on swinging the bats. Shortstop, number four, Octavia Rio. Right up the middle, scoring two, and Barbary all the way from first base. Lasseter scores easy. She had the easy run, run, and then Barbary had to earn it a little bit with the slide at home. And here's Rio. She had a two-run homer just an inning ago. We talked about a couple of four run innings for the Dukes before this frame and all of a sudden now they've put three more on the board for this 11 three lead. Pretty good job behind the dish. By Matei she had a great assist and a throw out of Lasseter who was trying to advance on a ball similar to that back in the third. What the Dukes are proving this inning is that they can put up some runs on the board without having to hit home run. I was just thinking that we haven't seen a home run hit this inning. Now tipped into the glove of Mate. Coach Lamar over at first base encouraging. Trying to see if Rio can put another good swing on a pitch. She has one of the five home runs. Stayed alive by spoiling that one a little bit down, a little bit out, but able to make contact and see another. I would just love to see more of an off speed pitch from the pitching staff from Lady Magic against these hitters for the Lady Dukes, just because they're way too powerful and you've got to have something that can slow them down. And we haven't seen that consistent off speed presence. Like maybe Johnson had a couple early, but then Gamsby re entered. She got the fly out to left near the fence off the bat of the pinch hitter Rodriguez, but Barbary had 
an RBI single, and Lamar had the two-run double. Strike three called it almost hit the elbow guard of Rio but she's rung up by our plate umpire Oscar Ross Jr. And that will end the inning a three run frame for the Dukes in 11 three Dukes advantage as we have completed four innings here in Colorado. When we go to the top of the fifth inning here in Colorado, Lady Dukes lead the Lady Magic 11 to 3. Imagine this 16 year olds on their phones. <laughs> you know what that's like. <laughs> I, I do. Maybe they're watching the telecast on the ESPN app. Obviously. I think so. I think we're going to have a pitching change for the Dukes. I think this is Ava Bradshaw. She's on the throw. Michigan Gatorade Player of the Year. Coming in for Olivia Duncan. Really nice outing for her. Now she's a junior. She's one of the few that has not already graduated. So she's not committed. She puts Oklahoma. That is a school that she would love to play for. I think that's a pretty good uh, dream or aspiration to chase. Taylor Billy is going to bat. Beal, the leadoff hitter. Bounced to short and also struck out. Beal, I believe, will also be part of the Futures game that will follow this one. So, her day far from done. Future Arizona Wildcat. Off the glove of Bradshaw, and that's going to lead to a base hit from Beal. Any bobble, any misdirection with a slapper makes it awfully tough to record it out, but that one just trickled away, and Beal has her first single. Number nine, Tell you what, though, that Arizona program didn't miss a beat, though, this past year. They picked up after Mike Candrea retired from his incredible career. Caitlin Lowe, new head coach, and was a slapper herself. So Taylor Beal, we have seen her go yard, though. Let's be quite clear. She has a ton of power, but has the ability to show short game. And of course, Caitlin Lowe, one of the greatest slappers, if not the greatest slapper at all time. Winchell, hard on the ground at first. Estrada looked to second. She'll take the sure out at first. 
to retire Winchell with a first out as Veal goes to second. That ball got to her so quickly she could take a peek down to second. You can tell very quickly in this inning, Beal and Winchell, both left-handed hitters with slap ability, trying to make something happen and get a couple of runners on base, create a big inning, get back in this ball game. Dakota Kennedy already a couple of hits, including a home run back in the third. She has the one homer for the Lady Magic, another future Arizona Wildcat. Big Aaliyah Andrews fan. And she's a Sacramento, California native. But Bradshaw held on to that one for a little extra. She spun that way up in the zone. I'm just trying to respect the power, take a little something off. Kennedy with three home runs on the day. One here in this game, like you're talking about, two in the earlier contest against Firecrackers Brashear. And robbed of another. Yes. Feel like you're seeing the ball pretty good and you're barreling it up. <laughs> you have three homers in the last game and a half. Lady Magic trying to find a way to at least put a run on the board. And take a base runner as Kennedy will walk. So she doesn't get the hit, but Magic needs base runners. And now a, a pair aboard for the cleanup hitter, Tiana Dell. And I think that was a not an intentional walk, but one of those things where, hey, let's let's see how the first two pitches go. And if we fall behind in the count, let's not give Dakota Kennedy anything around the heart of the plate. In my opinion, the best hitter on this Lady Magic team. Bell would not chase that pitch up in the zone. Future Cal Golden Bear. It's going to be back and out of play. Antioch, California native. Waited on that pitch and drilled it to the gap in right center field. That's going to score a run. Kennedy will stop at third. A ringing single from Bell, her second RBI of the game. And it's 11 4. It's a big run. Second base. Yeah, forces this game to see the bottom of the fifth at least. And really nice piece here. Sits on this changeup from Bradshaw. Just drifted over the heart of the plate. A little bit too center cut. Beal able to score easily from second. Zermanio swung at the first pitch all three times. A little funny English there. She's going to be retired at first after getting two previous singles. She does bring home Kennedy to make this an 11 5 game. I thought when that ball started to spin once it hit the dirt it might be trouble. That's a tough one for Bradshaw because you're thinking as a pitcher oh, I jammed her up so well but still an RBI. Fortunately Lady Duke's able to get an out out of that spinny hit. Another spinner. Off the bat of Tiana Johnson. Tiana Johnson hitting here for Jenkins. Another Sacramento native. Another Cal Golden Bear. And that one popped up. Will there be a play? And the answer is no. <laughs> it landed back in the seats. Well, there could have been a play. <laughs> just by a fan. Yes, yeah, by a fan. <laughs> Got a lot of a lot of ball players in the stands here. Boy, there was some folks scurrying to get out of the way. Oh, I see. The problem is they all have snow cones, so that would be a problem. Yeah. It's a quick priority decision. <laughs> Gotta save that snow cone. That's right. We were in a run rule spot coming into this inning, but the Magic have played at a pair of runs. And Johnson hitting for Grace Jenkins. 
two runs on two singles this inning. There's another one popped up. I think this will stay in play or it will not. In fact, right above us. Caught by Kyle Coso, Triple Crown Sports, right behind the booth. Everybody <laughs> tracking down some foul balls. Do you get a snow cone still if you return one? It's a good question. When you drop one, you get one for returning the softball. Johnson will take strike three. So Bradshaw able to get the K of the pinch hitter to end the fifth inning. Good finish for Bradshaw with the strikeout. Lady Dukes have the opportunity to walk this game off, but not before a strikeout. Ava Bradshaw in relief, pulling the string. I have the same meeting every year with parents and kids, and they always ask the same question, where do I fit? How good am I, coach? What camp should I go to? What coach should I write? Should I call somebody? Am I doing everything I should do? But it all starts with where are they at. Most of them have no idea what their skill package, their total package converts to on a collegiate level. It's an 11-5 lead for the Dukes. Over the Magic as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. College sports evaluation is on the cutting edge of sports analytics. CSE provides youth and collegiate athletes with verified sensor data, trusted by and tested with over 200 college programs. CSE's team of dedicated mathematicians provide the only valid data outlet available to accurately evaluate players as they compare to collegiate levels. Visit CSEval.com to learn more. Dukes have a chance to see if they can run rule this game as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning, up by six. Reagan Johnson is already two for three. Back to the top of the lineup. And she's going to take strike one. So Gamsby started. She exited in the second inning. Johnson pitched the second. And we saw a re entry for Gamsby. She's pitched ever since. Off the end of the bat to third. How about the stretch at first base? by Jenkins and Frank Covington said she came off the base on the throw from Bell. Well you hate to tag an error on that play but I guess that would be the case and maybe a conversation as well with Frank Covington. I was remarking at the stretch the athleticism from Jenkins. Let's go back and see this again. Well it's unfortunate because it was such a great play from Tiana Bell at third. Big stretch there from Johnson. Can you doing the splits? It's hard to tell with that angle. And you know, also I don't think she had control as well. So you add add that on top of the off the base call, and Lady Dukes have a runner aboard. Umpire conference, but they will leave Johnson aboard at first. And again now, long ball. Could end it. Vega homered back in the first. And that one's on the outside corner. Good pitch from Gamsby for strike one. Dukes had four runs in the bottom of the first when they were trailing 2 nothing. Kind of set the tone maybe just a bit for this game. They only, I say only, scored five runs in their semifinal contest. They were up five, nothing had to hold on for a 5 4 win. Things got a little bit dicey. They would prefer not to have as much drama here in the championship game. 
Yeah, both of these teams well-earned victories to get to this point. And fouled back. Already the fourth time, though, through this Dukes lineup here in the bottom of the fifth inning. It's a lot of ABs. Say it is. <laughs> in a week where you're going to play a lot of games and get a lot of at bats. And wave it a miss. So Vega goes down on strikes. It's a big first down. The execution on this rise ball from Gamsby so good. Low it away, but it's got up spin. So it's a rise ball, it's just low through the zone. And the key for me was that it was off the plate as well. I would agree. Looked like it was going to be a pitch to hit, and then it yep. was not. Layla Lamar singled and scored way back in the first. She's had a couple of ground outs since. I bet she feels like she's due for a big swing. And that one hit hard in the center for a base hit. Two for four is Lamar. Johnson will hold at second base. It's going to bring up the cleanup hitter, Kiki Estrada. First base, number 89, Kiki Estrada. Had an older brother that played hockey in Canada. She's doing it with a different stick, if you will. The bat. I enjoy the fact that her favorite fast pitch player, at least one of the two she listed, Taylor Pleasance. And, and Taylor was one of those that I got a chance to see in this event. I was with several you. Several years ago. Yeah, you bet. Houston girl. It's on the corner. We're just catching enough of that pitch in the plate before it drifts outside for a strike. That's what is so great about this event is you know, you see so many of these youngsters, they have so much softball left in their careers and so much to grow, but you just see glimpses of their talent. And you write a couple of names down or you have some memorable hits and then a couple of years later, you're like, oh yeah, there she is. Absolutely. Hitting home runs for Arkansas. I remember when I saw her back in Colorado, back in 2022. That'll be part of the fun of the next game as well. We talk about future stars. For a lot of them, they'll be stars in the very near future. Really impressed though by Gamsby this inning as she continues to drift pitches away from some of these left handed bats. Just off that outside edge. Like that one but spoiled by Estrada who's looking for her third hit and four at bats. Yeah unfortunately I feel like she's gotten better as this game's gone on. It's just been a little bit too little too late with the five home runs hit from the Lady Dukes. And it's that rise ball that has that screw movement, so like kind of like a scries, if you will. It's moving up and out, low through the zone. We talked about Gamsby, how at times she's almost angled towards that left-handed box in her follow-through mechanics. And it must be disconcerting for a left-handed hitter to have her coming at me while the pitch is breaking away from me. Drilled in the gap right center. Goodbye. A three run homer from Kiki Estrada. Her second of the game. That was a laser beam and the Dukes are going to celebrate. That's going to do it. A run rule championship for the Dukes. Home run number six is a game winner. And very fitting that the way they run rule this game is off a home run. <laughs> We saw five different players go yard, six total home runs for the Lady Dukes, and Kiki Estrada, the number four hitter, with the biggest blast of the game, three-run shot here. She was set up outside, waits for a pitch that's inside, and was not fooled. She knows it right before she gets to first base. That ball is gone, and her second trip around the bases in this championship game. Kiki Estrada says, "Woo, Pig Suey with that three-run homer. And these two teams have had quite a journey to get to this point, and now 
Kenzie, they'll start it up again. This is just the power pool, so they have a lot more softball to come. Yeah, hats off to both of these ball clubs. Really well played game. Of course, Lady Dukes coming away with the win with the big offense. 14-5, our final in five innings. We'll step aside, come back and recap from Colorado in a moment. Well, five innings, a run rule victory for the Lady Dukes as they take home the 18U Power Pool Championship. On the home run from Kiki Estrada, this was number six for the Dukes. Kenzie, this was a no-doubter off the bat for the big left. Yeah, I know we don't have a player of the game, but if we did, I'm picking Kiki Estrada. Her second home run of the game, three-run shot here to walk it off. She knew it as soon as she hit that ball. Cleared the fences right center field. And Lady Dukes with Five different players go in the yard, six total home runs. See Olivia Duncan's performance in the circle. Kiki Estrada, a couple of home runs, four runs batted in. 18 hits, though, for the Lady Dukes, and they flex their muscles offensively. Yeah, solo home run from Dakota Kennedy. She had three home runs, four today in the doubleheader that the Lady Magic had, but just not enough firepower to match the offense for the Lady Dukes. Well, coming up next, we're going to have the Futures game. We're going to have about 60 players, some of the best in this 18U age bracket here in Colorado.